Hey everyone, I'm Chris Howard. Welcome to Top of Mind. We're coming to you from Barcelona, lovely Barcelona, where I teach the Clergy Expo. Uh, and it's just a great place. The Mediterranean is right there. I can see it through the window. We have 7,000 fantastically smart people uh, and just having a great time the last few days. What I wanted to do was to bring you to truly Top of Mind of a handful of things that are coming to me that we're talking about, that people are truly a dog's breakfast set of topics. Uh, some of it's affirmation based on things that we've talked about on this series over the last several months. Uh, but especially this transition from experimenting with AI to really figuring out how to implement it and how to get value from it. Our keynote was about that fear, uh, but a lot of conversation about augmented work. And so this is employees paired with technology and complex tasks or for decision-making uh, but some interesting things coming out of that. One is thinking of AI truly in a partnership way. So rather than displacing people in work situations, it's really augmenting how they how they do their work, uh, which is a true collaboration, uh, an extension of what they do. But we're starting to see data coming in uh, around what that true sort of relationship looks like in terms of, of, of providing outcomes. And we're seeing very consistently that when paired together, the, the combination of human and machine has a better outcome than either one on their own. Say, for example, in a customer service situation, which is made of the most common use case that we see, but in lots of other professional situations and situations as well. And so we'll have more data about that coming forward. I had a chance to, er, uh, to interview Eric Vignolfs, who is a well known uh, researcher, scholar, and teaches at Stanford University and really studies the relationship between digital technologies and economics. And of course, he's been focused on AI considerably this year as, as well. And he's also doing studies of generative AI specifically in the context of work, not only from a productivity point of view, which is sort of the top of mind, but also from an employee satisfaction or customer satisfaction. Uh, it just the, the, what it means to use these technologies in a context of work is actually making employees feel better at what they do especially if they can reach an outcome and they feel that they're paired with a helper, this machine helper. Some other things that we're hearing consistently in the, in the Gen AI space uh, is really the pressure to move to smaller models, but also a lot more conversation about data. So that, again, is affirming. We've talked about that here on these episodes before, but a lot more very detailed uh, conversation about what do I need to do with my data to get it AI ready uh, and there's a significant amount of investment that's required to do that. So that's one essential piece of this conversation. I'm watching really carefully and sort of go through the, the, the demographics of leadership across our communities. And of course, what's happening is that leaders are getting younger, simply younger than me. So I, I feel like I'm getting older as they're getting younger, but they bring a whole different set of expectations to the job. Uh, and so that's both as a manager, but also in terms of how they want to interact with information. And one specific thing I've been looking at is to say, for the generation that's grown up, say, in, in the game, well, that are sort of playing multi, massive multiplayer, very immersive types of games, um, that br it brings with it a, uh, an expectation of how they're going to interact with information in a very ambient multiplayer type of way. And so that experience transfers into the workplace more and more, which means that I need to actually be leveraging multiple techniques, including uh, generative AI, but not just generative AI, to actually create the information environment that you can expect. Extremely useful. Now, one thing that's come up in those conversations that uh, didn't surprise me exactly, but we haven't been talking about very much, and that's the metaverse. So metaverse, you know, the hype on the metaverse was super high last year this time, but it kind of has really faded out, at least in terms of the direction that people thought it would go. But where I'm hearing more is in the use of an industrial sense, and the industrial metaverse, where you actually are, people are in a mixed reality environment surrounded by data, but also data coming off of machinery, I have my eyes on those, that set of things to say, where does that go? Uh, it won't, I don't think it's going to have the same sort of breadth of impact with the Jenny and I have had. This is a very particular moment in time with that technology, but I'm always looking for these kinds of convergences, and I see they're coming perhaps in this. The other thing that's come up a fair amount is quantum features. Uh, I'm asking lots of senior leaders and people in quantum sessions and asking them, 
what's on your mind that uh, you were thinking about in the next couple of years? And in many, many of them are talking about quantum. Some of them are doing it in terms of quantum simulation more than you might imagine. And so that's also on my radar to say, what's it going to take for quantum to go through the same kind of catalyzed experience that the I agree? I don't think it's 10 years away, but it but it's closer than that, just based on what I'm hearing. So we're watching the definitely. So thanks a lot. I'm Chris Howard. We'll see you next time on Topic.